much for joining me today. I'm Colleen Klimczak, organizational coach and certified professional organizer. I own Peace of Mind Professional Organizing, LLC. Since 2003, I've been helping my clients live better lives through organizing and organizational and productivity coaching. In addition to organizing and coaching, I support my clients with a weekly newsletter, a weekly accountability and productivity session through professional speaking, blogging, and podcasting. Want to finish strong with me this week? Join me for Finish Line Friday every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central for a two-hour productivity session. Drop me an email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or follow the Zoom room link on my Instagram or Facebook pages. So I was writing this content on December 26th to be published the first week of January. I had high hopes for getting a few high priority tasks done today while also staying in my jammies and eating Christmas cookies, both of which I actually stuck with until about 11 o'clock. So at 6.30 a.m., I opened up my laptop and my task list after a very busy four days of wonderful Christmas revelry. It really was wonderful. We celebrated with friends and family in multiple states. I am so blessed. I have so many amazing people in my life. Truly blessed. And then this morning at 6.30 a.m., today, right, I need to make progress on some neglected tasks. Two professional tasks specifically, writing this podcast content and working on the infrastructure for my subscription service that I plan to launch in 2024. I also need to send out emails for two different ministries that I run at church, and I need to get my house back to normal after Christmas and before more house guests arrive tomorrow midday. So at 6.30 a.m., I had already, with my first cup of coffee, identified that those were my focus areas for today. Then I looked at my schedule for the day. I realized that with the people still sleeping in my house, and they slept late, (laughs) that house tasks and making noise should probably be an afternoon and evening endeavor. I also need to make a list and either head to the grocery or place a grocery order, but that entails tidying the fridge and freezer and asking questions of the still sleeping people and family members, so that too was relegated until later. The professional tasks are more time-specific anyway, with two appointments, one with my assistant and one with my podcast producer this morning. So again, early morning, I looked at the transcription service that I use to turn my road trip ramblings into text so that I can edit it and then publish the article, and it wasn't working. And honestly, I was less excited about the topic that I had chosen for today anyway, So I checked in on my editorial content calendar. I recommitted to my plan to talk about productivity tools in the toolbox for January. And I moved my meeting with my assistant to tomorrow to focus on writing the podcast content today. And in doing all of those things, I realized that I was using time blocking to make things happen for myself today. And since I was using time blocking, and it is one of the tools I want to talk about in January, I figured today was the day and I should write about that for all of us. So time blocking, aka batch work or time chunking, what is it, right? So what is time blocking? Uh, Time blocking is a productivity strategy. It is looking at our calendar. Uh, It's looking at the time we have in our day and in our week, and not as just a blank white canvas, but instead as opportunity, divvied up into bite-sized pieces. It's assigning important work that needs to be done today and this week to the time that we have, instead of hoping that we can somehow cram it all in without a plan to make it happen. So time blocking lets our brain work on one topic or category at a time because, my friends, multitasking is a myth. So if we remember that all projects are comprised of a series of smaller projects, we can work in time blocking. We can work those tasks into blocks of time during the week. And then we can realize some flow and also some economies when we work on similar tasks at the same time. 
For example, when I work on my bookkeeping tasks, I open up my Quicken uh, account on my laptop. And then I also open up my client hour spreadsheet and paypal.com. And I can toggle between those three things to get that work done in the time that I have blocked to do bookkeeping tasks. Another great thing about time blocking is that it dictates what we are not working on right now. And I find this very helpful. It would be so easy to get off track, to react to an email, to start on a personal or house project, and disregard my time blocking and task lists. So I find that time blocking is very helpful when I assign bookkeeping or podcast content to a certain hour of the day. I know that that's what I'll be working on in that time and not other things. What I also like about time blocking is that Uh, having a block of time to work on a set of tasks creates urgency within the block. So what I'm doing essentially is setting a series of mini deadlines throughout my day, and that helps me to stay productive. I like deadlines. If you don't, then don't worry about it, but I find that very motivating personally. I didn't always realize that other people don't work this way. I definitely credit my use of time blocking as a strategy uh, to being a business owner and um, to having to work my own professional and personal tasks in around client appointments for the last 20 years. So I'm going to give an example. For example, on a given Thursday, I have a client appointment uh, in person from 830 to 11, and it's a 10 minute drive from my house. Then I have a short break uh, for my drive home and some lunch. Then I have a block of coaching appointments from noon to three. So those are my paid working hours for that Thursday. And uh, the time that I spend with my clients is focused solely on that client. But in addition to my client hours, I also have my work. My work being what moves the business forward or me personally forward, right? So yes, I take care of my clients and those are my billable hours, but I also have my work that I also want to do on that certain day. I chose Thursday as an example because on Thursday, I take care of bookkeeping tasks and speaking engagement tasks. So realistically, my schedule for that Thursday could look like this. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., I have something called personal block. And yes, it's actually on my Google Calendar. So personal block means my morning routine, um, exercise, prayer, shower, whatever, right? I'm sure there's coffee and vitamins in there somewhere. Um, At 7 a.m. to 7.20, I have something called maintenance block, and that is make my bed, wipe down the bathroom, start a load of laundry, tidy up the kitchen, right? doesn't take long, but it means that those tasks happen every day in that block of time. If I assign a time block to make those tasks happen, it's more likely to make that happen. And then I move on to um, at 7.20 to my admin block. And an admin block for me is checking my email, checking any texts that have come in since the end of the workday the day before, maybe posting on my social media accounts before I leave the house. So, you know, that kind of stuff. But again, having a time block and having tasks assigned to the time block make those two things happen. Then, you know, 8 to 8.30 is loading up myself and driving to my client. 8.30 to 11 is working with my client. From 11 to noon, I drive home, I probably eat some lunch, I check in on some texts and emails, and I take a brain break. And then from noon to three, I take care of my clients on the coaching calls, right? I mentioned this is my paid time. These are billable hours, services delivered. At 3 p.m., I take a break. Again, I grab a snack, and then I start on my work. And what I might have on my calendar then is 3.15 to 4 p.m., money or bookkeeping. And in that block of time, I have tasks like look at work log, send out invoices, update Quicken for deposits and spending, and create invoices for upcoming speaking gigs, right? So all of those tasks are money specific, bookkeeping specific, and thinking of them all together, A, makes them happen, and B, gives my brain a break because all I have to do is think about money in that time period. At 4 p.m., let's say 4 p.m. to like 4.30, then I'm just focusing on the admin of speaking. So sending out emails to my site coordinators to to confirm upcoming events, um, 
maybe share those events on my social media accounts. So again, making sure that there's time to make those things happen, make them happen. And then from 4.30 to 6, uh, it's probably a little bigger picture planning for my speaking engagements. For example, I have a you know new presentation to create. So from 4.30 to 6, I have blocked on my calendar, work on new presentation content, PowerPoint presentation, and handouts. Okay, so there's probably a little bit more work later too, and that may be personal in nature, like, you know, reading an article or doing some meal planning, whatever. So that's a day, and that's what time blocking can look like and what time blocking can do for us, right? So I pair up the high priority tasks that I need to accomplish today with the available time I have to complete them. The first step of time blocking Well, the first step of time blocking is really more than just the first step of time blocking. And I say that with a smile. Time blocking is a great tool to get things done. And it requires some groundwork that we have fortunately already covered in articles, podcasts, and newsletters. The groundwork from time blocking is to review our calendar for the day and the week. It's to prioritize our important work. And that means that we need to know our focus areas and what's important to us. Groundwork also is having realistic time estimates around our work. And that means knowing how long our tasks usually take. If I'm struggling with overwhelm or with prioritizing, I may go so far as to assign five minute increments to the tasks on my to-do list to determine if I can actually feasibly do what I want to get done in the block of time I've given it. Um, I don't want to set myself up to failure by putting four hours of work in a one hour time block. That's ridiculous and it kind of goes against the whole point of time blocking. So it also requires that we understand that all projects are comprised of a series of smaller projects. And finally, the groundwork in making time blocking work is flexibility. So planning is essential. We've covered that definitely in past podcasts. Planning is essential, but so is flexibility in the implementation of the plan. Okay, so to review, time blocking can help us get more done. More importantly, it helps us to get our high priority work done. We start with looking at our day and our week and at our high priority tasks. We group those high priority tasks into batches with similar themes. We assign those tasks to the time we have available this week. And if you or I are currently saying we don't have time to work on high priority tasks this week, uh, there's a problem and we probably need to be flexible, right? Okay, so that's what time blocking can do for you and for me. The new year is a time of transition for all of us. Times of transition are excellent opportunities to make positive change. If it is time to invest in yourself and explore coaching for organizing and productivity, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a line via email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or message me through any of my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Thanks so much and talk to you next week.